Today we've got a special one for you. Probably the most innovative, versatile, and coolest bar I've seen come out of the industry in I don't know how long. The Maverick Bar. A bar that can do almost anything. But is this jack of all trades a master of none? And more importantly, is that better than being a master of one? Because with this bar, you can do a ton. Seriously, I've spent the last few weeks throwing this bar through everything I could think of, and I still feel like I'm just scratching the surface. But it's a lot easier to make a product that can do one thing well rather than a ton. So we're gonna break down the good and the bad on what is probably the most unique product I own. So let's get into it. We've been talking about creating a series on small American businesses that don't get the exposure they deserve for various reasons. Probably because they don't have an affiliate program, so influencers ignore them. And this is the first official one, though technically we've done a few in the past. So if you don't wanna miss out on the next one, make sure you subscribe and let us know in the comments who else we should include. And in many ways, Fino X Fitness really embodies that type of small creative company. Essentially a one-man show creating really original and ingenious equipment out in Michigan. And this isn't the only interesting thing Gordon has created either. There's the HeliFit system, which are fully articulating, highly adjustable modular jammer arms that would need a full video on their own to show off all the things that can be done with them. And you might actually be familiar with him if you've seen the stealth leg press that Titan makes. It was originally his idea and they manufacture it. And there does seem to be some classic Titan in there if you get what I mean, but it worked out in the end. And he's got a bunch of unique and versatile equipment he makes, but they'd all require their own videos. And I've got to make money on this channel eventually so that Winnie lets me keep buying stuff. So we decided to focus on this one. And this is definitely the type of bar for people who like to fiddle around and experiment. And I don't mean like my cheating ex-girlfriend in high school. What I mean is this is not a bar for everyone. So make sure that you understand what you're getting. And if it looks like it's been around like my ex-girlfriend, well, you're right. It's actually a prototype bar that was sent out to major manufacturers that were looking into producing this bar for him. And man, was one of them not happy. When that company didn't get the rights and then realized they had to ship it to me, it was the worst packaging job I've ever seen. Everything was just shipped loosely in one box. And actually when the box got here, it was bent into an L shape. I had no idea what it is. So just realize when yours arrives, it'll look a little nicer. I've also beat the crap out of this thing for a few weeks, but I will say if you're expecting the glitz and polish that a huge corporation would deliver, and depending how much you value cosmetics, this might not be the bar for you because the very thing that makes it such a unique product, the fact that it's modular and can be easily adjusted and swapped around into different positions means you're gonna scuff it up as you go along as you're setting it up for one of the countless exercises you can do with this thing. And I'm not the most creative person, but I've run this thing through so many exercises, just variation after variation, from bench to squat and everything in between. So what is the Maverick bar exactly? I suppose the easiest way to explain it is to say that it's a modular open trap bar, but to be honest with you, that really doesn't do it justice. And I'm really not that sure after talking to you about it for 10 minutes that I will be able to do it justice. You want a cambered bench bar? This can do that. Floor press? Check it off the list. Farmer carries, why not? The biggest limitation will be your imagination and time. But it takes some getting used to as you wrap your head around the concept and all the ways this thing can be set up. And Gordon does have resources on his webpage and his Instagram, but he needed a cute face to get this thing out to the masses and you know, basement Brandon was busy, so here I am. It does take some time to set up, especially as you're getting familiar with it. And while it's generally quick and simple, it's faster to have dedicated equipment for each exercise. And even though this is a good product for people looking for one thing that does a lot, just realize that one piece of equipment that can do a ton of things isn't gonna do as well as a special piece of equipment does at the one thing it does well. So for example, if you had a really good multi-grip cambered bench bar, it's going to do really well at benching, but not particularly well at anything else. Whereas this bar can do things that no bar has ever done before. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. I have every potential upgrade for this bar. I've got the angled handles, both sets of extension arms, and the safety squat bar add-on, which does cost more. But he's been teasing potential upgrades for this bar, like machined Olympic rotating sleeves that would replace these bolt-on pipe sleeves, which require axler collars, but that's actually pretty common for a specialty barbell. And I just use my Rogue HG 2.0 collars on it. 
He's actually already made changes to the prototype version that was sent out to me. This front bar has been upgraded to one and three quarter inch steel tubing so that it matches the arms and that will bring up the weight capacity some. And this rear telescoping jack stand system has been removed so that the arm is one solid piece which simplifies the bar without removing any functionality. And I'll be honest, I never touched the telescoping thing anyway, but the jack will still be removable. Him being able to tweak things shows one of the pros of not handing this off to a major company. He's able to tweak things much quicker. And with a bar with this much potential, it's naturally taken time to get to this point. And I'm excited to see where it ends up as I think there's a few refinements and options that could be done that we'll cover in more detail as we go. The bar itself is made from 11 gauge steel tubing with half inch holes drilled every 1 and 7 eighths inches, which is one of the ingenious parts of its designs. You just stick things wherever and however you want, and twist and contort this thing in ways that other bar owners only wish they could. With a 14 and a half inch loadable sleeve length and weighing in at about 45 pounds, depending how you have it set up, it's actually pretty easy to move around, though it is a specialty bar. So it has a larger footprint than a standard barbell, which can make it a little clunky to get in and out of the rack and can affect it in squat, but we'll talk about specific lifts in a minute. If you're looking at this rack thinking, it's probably a pretty tight fit in a narrower rack, you're right, but he's made two versions. One for your wider 43 inch racks and another version which is three inches shorter. So you can comfortably fit it into tight spaces. One of the things that you should be aware of with this bar, and it might feel a little weird at first, at least until you get used to it, is the tolerances, which has to be a tough balancing act for him. Now, let me explain to you what I mean. Everything on this bar is locked in place by these pop pins or these trailer coupler pins. It's really not a particular difficult system, though it can take some thought and time, but having so many adjustable parts means you have to allow for some play between them. And that's so it's easy to adjust. Make things too tight and you're gonna get frustrated as you try to shove it in there. Too loose and you're left wondering if you hit the mark. So the handles do jiggle a little bit when it's set up, which is something you'll notice, but I've put this thing through a lot and it's held up really well. So let's get into specific exercises as I've tried this out for rows, hip thrusts, curls, skull crushers, and a ton of others, as well as the big three, bench, deadlift, and squat. Anyone who's been following our Instagram has seen my nightly posts of me just trying an insane amount of movements out with this thing. And whereas before I had this bar, I definitely had my doubts, I have to say I've been pleasantly surprised. With bench and really any of these exercises, I've tried out a ton of variations, which speaks to this bar's versatility. I found it to be well balanced, and some of that's because he's created a slight camber effect by offsetting the handles one inch from the axis that the weight sits on, which helps the stability in pressing just like a cambered multi-grip bar. The grips are quick and easy to adjust, but when you're pressing, you're gonna want these grips in the lowest position so that you're not creating additional leverage by raising it up here, which would make it harder to balance. And just like with the Rogue MG4C, since the body is deeper, you're gonna have to focus a little bit more on balancing it when pressing. But it works better than I expected given its size. I'd also love to see different angle options on the handles in the future or different handle diameters or options for the knurling. And the knurling I would qualify as passive, like the Ohio bar, but if this is supposed to be the bar that does it all, I think it would be really cool if you could build it exactly as you wanted. For deadlift, it works really well. I mean, it is essentially a modular open trap bar, but it's really cool that you can easily adjust the grip width, and of course, it's well balanced. With the handles in the low position, it's actually a one inch deficit deadlift, or you can raise the handles up two inches as well. If that's not enough, you could use it in a vertical position like you're doing a block pull. I also attempted a sumo deadlift on this thing, which we all know isn't a real lift and adds hundreds of pounds to your max. And unfortunately, my max is already hundreds of pounds over this thing's maximum weight capacity, so I had to take it easy on it. I probably won't really pursue this one much because it's not a lift I do, but it was another cool example of how much you can do on this bar. I have to admit, I didn't love squatting with this thing. It's not that it didn't work as a safety squat bar. I was able to squat with it, and I even came pretty close to recreating a front squat. But I felt like there was some sway front to back when loading up the weight and going through the movement. It might be that squat is my worst lift and I'm incompetent, but even after factoring in my hatred, it's a bit of a chunk of a bar, so you really have to walk it way back from the rack to avoid it catching on anything. I've brought this bar through the big three lifts and a ton of other exercises and still feel like there's a lot I haven't done with it yet. I really like this bar for its potential and I don't think it's reached its peak yet, but even in its current state, it's pretty well executed. 
At $400 without some of the additions, it's really difficult to find many flaws in it. I even tried talking him into charging more for it, but he's a terrible businessman and cares about people and wants it to be affordable. One night I spent over an hour with this thing just trying out different curl variations with it. And while it didn't work well at first, I was able to eventually figure out how to build it kind of like an easy curl bar. And the fact that I could just play around until I found something that worked was a really cool experience. If you're the type of person who likes to play around and tinker in your home gym, you'll have a lot of fun with this one, as I think it might be the pinnacle of home gym equipment, a single piece that can do a lot, even if it needs a little bit of refinement. And hopefully some companies notice, because I think the home gym community could really benefit from having a guy like this push the industry. And remember, it's made in America, and I have absolutely no affiliation with it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment and subscribe, if for no other reason than I can't make any money off this one.